I was going to go to the movies tonight and living in Thailand, we generally have one movie out that's in English. And the movie that's out now is Rampage with The Rock. And I was going to go see it. I, you know, I'm not really that excited about it, but most movies that come through are the bigger blockbuster type of movies. And so if I have a chance to see a movie, I, I like to see it in theaters if possible. Uh, I've realized that A Quiet Place is in theaters here. I overlooked it because it said it was in Thai language. And then I heard that there's no dialogue. So I'm about to go see, I think, The Quiet Place. And I hope that it doesn't end with just a ton of exposition explaining everything. Because I can speak Thai somewhat, but not well enough to follow a story, uh, to understand what's going on in a movie. So we'll see. I'm excited. I just watched the trailer. Looks looks pretty good. Uh, I really, really hope that it's not just like jump scares. Like I want it to be suspenseful, not startling, because that's that's kind of boring when it's just a loud noise and a shocking visual. That's not scary. You feel scared because you're startled, but it's a trick. It's not. Uh, it's not actually scary. So. I don't know. Hopefully it's good. I just got back from seeing uh, Quiet Place, and I thought it was great. Uh, I thought it was really engaging. I think the use of, well, I guess the lack of dialogue really sucks you into the story. So just a heads up, my theory is, if the movie's title is in the title of the video or the podcast or anything like that, I'm going to just talk about the movie. I'm not going to worry about spoilers or spoiler alerts. So this is that, but I probably won't go through this every time. Uh, This movie opens up with the family and they are uh, looking for supplies and they have three kids. And I thought it was brilliant the way they opened it because the youngest kid, he finds a spaceship and he really likes it, but it's got batteries in it. And they they kind of panic because they're trying to not make any noise. And if you've seen the trailer before you see the movie, you know that you can't make a sound. So I went into it having seen the trailer and having some idea of the concept. So this wasn't confusing, but I could see how if you went into it without knowing it could be. But anyway, so the boy wants to play with this spaceship. They keep stopping him. They take out the batteries. The boy sneaks the batteries back into the spaceship as they're walking out. And he starts playing with it. And you just see the terror and the panic wash over everyone but the youngest boy. And John Krasinski starts just sprinting down this bridge to try to get to his son and doesn't do it in time. And the boy ends up dying from this monster who just takes him out. So what I found really powerful about that scene is that they were basically telling you, they were establishing, this movie is willing to kill a kid. It's willing to kill not only a kid, but a cute kid who is innocent and just wants to play. This world is brutal, it is dangerous, and if you break the rules, you are going to pay for it. And I thought that, like, for how upsetting it was for it to happen, I thought it was a great idea and a good move on their part, the filmmaker's part, to put that in there. Because when you're going through the movie, you know everyone is at risk. They could do anything. Anyone could die in this movie. While this movie is a horror in some way, or a suspense, or a thriller, uh, it's really a movie about parenting, or being a family, and how far you're willing to go to protect your kids, to protect your wife, to protect your husband, to protect whoever. That's what's at the core. The monsters in this is a good device to encourage that story. But they weren't that scary. They weren't anything new or, like, stressful. It was the the idea of putting your newborn baby in that casket, essentially with an oxygen mask, so when it cries, the monster can't hear them. Or keeping your kids quiet all the time and making their toys out of fabric so when they play they're not making sounds and everything was just so gut-wrenching uh being a a father myself i was like man i would i would do anything 
to protect my kids. Like everything seems legitimate. Everything makes sense in this movie. Except my biggest issue, and so like I was saying before, I saw this in Thailand and it was dubbed in Thai. And there's a few moments where they're speaking and that was all in Thai and I didn't I didn't follow it great. I picked up some words here and there but not well enough to know what happened. And when they did sign language, there was Thai subtitles at the bottom of the screen. And I don't know if there was actually English subtitles in the English version or not, or if you don't know sign language, you're just clueless. Uh, so there's a lot of a lot of the communication outside of the real basic communication I kind of missed. If I made this, or if I was in this world, I would flood everywhere with noise. I would have as much noise going on at least away from my house. You know, I would have things blaring and, you know, going off in random intervals and doing different things to to try to lure them away from where I live, where my kids live. And uh, I assume they explain that a little bit when they're at the waterfall, uh, that maybe a constant noise is something that they just overlook. But again, you could set something on a timer that goes off every once in a while or, you know, moves around or... I don't know, I just feel like there's a lot of options. Overall, this movie I, I was super engaged with. I really enjoyed it. Um, you know, 95% of the time I thought it was great. I thought the corn silo part didn't make any sense. Like, I'm pretty sure you can walk on corn. Like, uh, that much corn. You know, you would not... It would not be quicksand like that. You would not s get sucked into it like... I don't know, unless there's an agitator on the bottom that's spinning and liquefying it, like moving it around so it, it's soft, but I just, I don't see how, I don't see how that door could sit on top and then hold on to it, but if they don't have the door, they're just getting sucked straight down. It doesn't make sense. Your body, if they lay flat, if they lay out, they're covering up more surface area than that door was. So they really shouldn't be falling into it, but that's a minor issue. Uh, one of my, the biggest issues was I thought they emotionally telegraphed that someone was going to die right at the end. I expected it to be Emily Blunt who ended up dying when she's watching, um, John Krasinski and the two kids meet back up right before that last fight. I was like, oh, she's, she's going to die. They're, the tone that they're setting right now is telegraphing that someone is about to die. Everything's too peaceful in this moment. It turned out to be John Krasinski. He died, and uh, he talked to his daughter in sign language before he sacrificed himself, which I thought was pretty dumb because there's a monster attacking his kids, and he like took a moment, like way too long, to say like you know I love you and I'll keep you safe. Something something along those lines. And then the very end, I felt was kind of cheesy with her pumping the shotgun and them getting ready to fight. That felt, uh, I don't know, I, I kind of crossed a line uh, into the ridiculous at that point. But uh, those are all very, very minor issues. Like, I don't think this movie's bad. I think this is one of my favorites I've seen this year. Uh, partly because I've seen a lot of bad stuff this year. But again, this movie is a lot of fun.